Um, I might begin by saying that uh, Professor Caesar and I are sort of rival authors. Uh, I have a book coming out in the spring called Achieving Our Country, American Leftist Thought in the 20th Century, which uh, has considerable overlap with Professor Caesar's book. Uh, its uh, targets include this weird European image of America as degenerate, vulgar, hopeless, and so on, the sort of uh, image uh, fostered by the works, by the books of Horkheimer Myrna Adorno, Baudelaire, Heidegger, and so on. Um, it also um, is full of doubts about the politics of identity and multiculturalism, uh, pretty much along the lines of Arthur Schlesinger's Disuniting of America and Todd Gitlin's book, The Twilight of Common Dreams. Um, the difference between our books is that um, he has a different set of American heroes than I do, or um, he cherishes the memory of different people than I do. The people uh, whom Jim Caesar mentions with most respect and enthusiasm are Publius Tocqueville and Leo Strauss. Um, I have nothing against Publius and Tocqueville. I'm dubious about Strauss. Uh, and my book makes heroes principally out of Dewey, Whitman, uh, the intellectuals and labor organizers of the progressive era, the New Deal, uh, and the um, advisors of presidents like Roosevelt, Kennedy, Tr Truman, Kennedy, and the Johnson of the mid-60s social legislation. Um, the, the thrust of my book is that what's, what's wrong with uh, the adoption of this weird anti-American image that Professor Caesar describes very well by American students and intellectuals uh, is that it makes it almost impossible to uh, have a real American political left. Uh, since the 60s, particularly since the um, debacle of the McGovern candidacy, uh, the leftist intellectuals in America, I argue, uh, have retreated into a sullen anti-Americanism of which the obsession with identity politics within the academy, obsession with identity politics and cultural politics within the academy is one symptom. Uh, I think it's a disaster for America that we have an academic left which is isolated from, for example, the trade unions and from the left wing of the Democratic Party and which holds itself aloof in this odd anti-American way. Um, so that's, you know, that's the basic difference in the way in which Caesar and I see the problem. I. We both have written anti-anti-American books, so to speak, uh, but um, the, the people whom we hold up, or the American institutions, traditions, and heroes whom we hold up sort of in defiance of this anti-Americanism are rather different. Um, at one point, uh, Caesar says, um, after he's introduced the figure of Leo Strauss as the man who brought the defense of political science to America uh, after apparently a long absence, an absence as far as I can see which lasted between Tocqueville and Strauss. Um, he, he says that, um, thanks perhaps to Strauss, constitutional political science has played no small part in this generation in the struggles of freedom against tyranny. I'm not clear what he means by constitutional political science. Uh, that is, um, if the Straussians are paradigmatic of the practice of constitutional political science, I can't really see what they've done in the struggle of freedom against tyranny because I can't quite see what Straussian politics is supposed to be. Uh, my best, my closest Straussian acquaintance, an old classmate, Alan Bloom, and I disagreed on every single philosophical topic. That is, he thought there was an eternal structure against which history played itself out. I thought everything was up for historical grab. But we both agreed that we were Hubert Humphrey-style liberals. Um, the, uh, the, most con 
The other conspicuous Strauss in, in American public life in recent years is William Crystal, who is, I take it, not a Hubert Humphrey-style liberal. Uh, he, was, he was given credit for uh, the Republican Party's ability to uh, knock down the uh, idea of national health insurance. That seems to me a national tragedy. Uh, and you now Crystal may be misrepresented in the press, but he, he comes across in the press as a toadying hanger-on of a corrupted oligarchy. So um, I'm, you know, I am unable to put Bloom and Crystal together as, you know, pursuing constitutional political science because they seem on opposite sides of all the interesting political questions. Um, I'm also dubious about Strauss as an interpreter of American life. Um, in um, Professor Caesar's book, much play is made of the contrast between this thing called constitutional political science and two bad philosophical views, one called positivism and one called historicism. Positivists believe in natural laws, uh, the understanding of which is useful for, for political deliberation. Historicists believe in laws of history, the understanding of which is useful for political deliberation. Uh, Gobineau on race would be an example of um, a belief in laws of nature relevant to politics. Uh, I take it Marxists and Heideggerians would be examples of people who think uh, they're historical, you know, sort of a priori knowable historical scenarios relevant to political deliberation. Uh, I have no use for either positivists or historicists, but they seem to me rather remote enemies and not particularly relevant to American intellectual life. Uh, it seems to me Strauss came to America convinced that all the bad guys were either positivists or historicists, a view which was natural enough if you were raised in Central Europe between the wars, but which was barely relevant to American intellectual life. So I don't think Strauss or the Straussians ever understood the significance of people like Dewey and Whitman for uh, American politics or American culture. And I don't think they grasp the enormous change that took place in America from the progressive era through the Great Society legislation. Johnson, which seems to me the, you know, the great drama of 20th century America and the a narrative of which should be uh, used as the principal weapon against European anti-Americanism. Um, Jim says that... Um, there's a discipline called political philosophy, which he defines as the inquiry into the nature of the best regime and the making of regimes accordingly. And there's another discipline called political science, which he defines as the inquiry guided by political philosophy into the factors that preserve and destroy different regimes. Uh, I, I find these, these notions rather hard to get in focus. I mean, I would have thought everybody thought the best regime was constitutional democracy, and there wasn't much argument about it anymore. And so I'm not sure why we need a whole discipline called political philosophy to tell us that again. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm also not sure why we need a, a discipline called uh, political science to um, uh, <laughs> inquire guided by political philosophy into the factors that preserve and destroy different regimes. People in political science departments do a lot of different, uh, a lot of useful stuff. But, uh, I, you know, I think everybody knows perfectly well the factors that destroy constitutional democracies. You know, the rich grinding the faces of the poor, bribing the politicians, you know, all the usual things. Uh, people in political science departments tell us a great many sordid details about exactly how they bribe them, exactly how they grind the faces, and so on. But Strauss and his followers, I think, have contributed very little to this, uh, you know, describing these uh, factors. So, uh, I, you know, though I, as I said in the beginning, uh, my views have a great deal of overlap in anti-anti-Americanism and in uh, suspicion about multiculturalism and identity politics with Caesars. Um, the, uh, the drift of the book I, I find strange in that all the people whom I think are important in 20th century America make no appearance. Uh, Dewey doesn't. Uh, the trade unions don't. Uh, FDR doesn't. Uh, my feeling is that there's been uh, a lot of you know healthy political thinking, a vibrant political intellectual culture in the U.S. Um, in our century. Not perhaps since the beginning of the 70s, which I think I think the last. 25 years have been a low point in American intellectual life. 
Uh, but uh, certainly before that period, and none of it, I think, has much to do with um, Caesar's heroes, Publius, Tocqueville, and Strauss.